Strangely and unexpectedly, after our delightful evening at Lady Diverge, the cousins came often of an afternoon to the parsonage. It was plain to see that Colonel Fitzwilliam came, because he took pleasure in Charlotte's and my society. Why Mr. Darcy came so frequently is more difficult to discern. If you would not laugh me to scorn, Eliza, I might suggest the possibility of this being partial to you. He barely looks at me and sits there for a half an hour without once opening his lips. Uh, but he often looks at you quite appraisingly when your look is engaged elsewhere. Stop. I'm going for a ramble in the park. Mr. Darcy, who enjoys the power of doing what we like. But so do we all. There's only a chance better means of having it than others, and I am at his disposal. I suppose your cousin brought you here, certainly to keep you at his disposal. It's a wonder he doesn't marry, to keep some permanent convenience of the sort. But I suppose his sister will do for the present, for she is under his sole care. In fact, I am joined with him in guardianship of Miss Darcy. Are you really? Young ladies her age are often difficult to manage, and if she has any true Darcy spirit, she may like to have her own way. Indeed, she is one of the most tactical creatures in the world, and a great favorite of Miss Bingley. I believe you said you know her. A little. Mr. Darcy takes a very prodigious deal of care of Mr. Bingley. From something Darcy said, I have reason to believe that Mr. Bingley is very much indebted to him. It is a circumstance which Darcy did not wish to be generally known, because if it were to get around to Lady's family, it would be an unpleasant thing. You must depend on my not mentioning it. He merely said that he recently congratulated himself on saving a friend from the inconveniences of the most imprudent marriage, and I always suspect it to be Bingley because of his open nature to give him a toast great I beg your pardon, but what right has Mr. Darcy to impose upon a friend's inclination? Uh, there were some very strong objections to Lady's family, as I recall. One, I believe, was a country attorney, and the other, a uh, mercantile background, or something like that. Or perhaps an unfit mother. But this is all conjecture. Good day, team, Miss Cannon. Jane herself, there could be no possibility of objection. All loveliness and goodness as she is. Neither could be it anything be imputed against my father, who, though with some peculiarities, has abilities Mr. Darcy need not to stay. Of course, my mother. But Mr. Darcy would find a much deeper wound in his want for his friend's important connections and from their want of sense. He is governed by the worst type of pride, and partly from his want of retaining Mr. Bingley for his sister. Miss Bent. Mr. Darcy. I... Would it be suitable if I... Inquired of your health. My health? As I've not encountered you these past few days, I, I come to inquire of your health. My health, Mr. Darcy, meets all the usual standards. Ah. Um. Yes. Ah. Um. In vain I have struggled. It will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. Actually, I dismay. I am slow, even dilatory. I should have declared myself an earlier date, but there are always the family objections, which judge me to post inclination, the general sense of your social inferiority of it being a degradation of the line, but I could not forget a duty to my estate, a pride of place, which, given your circumstances, might have disincluded you. And thus, the very ardency I described took place against my, my will and reason, or rather, in opposition to my character and inclination. But my feelings were so strong that I had been unable to overcome them, and I can only hope now that they will be rewarded by your acceptance of my hand. There. I have spoken ill, but meant well, I suspect. 
in such cases as this, it is, I believe, the established mode to express some sense of obligation to the sentiments vowed, however unequally they may be returned. It's natural that obligation should be felt. And if I had any gratitude, I would now thank you, but I cannot. I have never desired your good opinion, and you have certainly bestowed it most unwillingly. The feelings which you tell me have long suppressed your feelings, will have no difficulty in overcoming it after this explanation. And this is all the reply which I have the honor of expecting? I may wish to be informed why, with so little endeavor at civility, I am thus rejected. Well, I might as well inquire why, with so evident a design of offending and insulting me, you chose to tell me that you liked me against your reason, against your will, and even against your character? Was this not some cause for incivility? If I was uncivil? But I have other provocations. You know I have. Do you think that any consideration would tempt me to accept the hand of the man who has ruined perhaps forever the happiness of a beloved sister? You have separated Mr. Bingley from Jane, and in a way which, I must say, has hurt them and ruined their lives forever. Can you deny that you have done it? I have no wish to deny that I did everything in my power to separate my friend from your sister, nor that I rejoice in my success. Towards him I have been kinder than towards myself. Quite clearly said. But it is not just this on which my dislike is founded. Your character has been illustrated. I mentioned what I have received many months ago from Mr. Wickham. You take eager interest in that gentleman's concerns. Knowing his misfortunes, who wouldn't take an interest? His misfortunes? And of your infliction. You have taken all of his fortunes, and yet you treat his misfortune with contempt. And this is your opinion. I thank you for expressing it so fully. These bitter accusations might have been avoided, and I, with greater policy, flattered you into the belief of my being compelled by unqualified, unalloyed inclination. But disguise of every sort is my horse. The mode of your declaration has not affected me. You could not have offered me your hand in any way that would have tempted me to accept it. From the very beginning, your arrogance and selfish disdain for the feelings of others have built an immovable dislike. You are, without doubt, Mr. Darcy, the last man in the world whom I could be prevailed upon to marry. You have said marry. quite enough. Forgive me for taking up so much of your time, Except my best wishes for your health and happiness.